Hello, everyone. I hope everyone can uh, hear me clearly. Uh, can you please confirm that you can hear the sound? It's good. The video is good. Hello, Frederic. Thanks for joining us today. How is everyone doing today? How is trading going? Hello, Raquel. So let's wait uh, one more minute to see some other people maybe joining right now. Okay. So guys, how is trading doing? It's Tuesday today. We had some moves in the market. Are you participating in any trade so far? Okay, so as always, just to make sure that this webinar is for uh, general information purposes only and it doesn't involve um, personal advice and financial advice. Okay, now today's topic, it's in regards uh, a very important aspect of trading, which is the trend trading. And in my 10 years experience as a trader, I see that many beginners and intermediate traders, unfortunately, they have the tendency to get into the market right at the peak if they are buying and they get right at the bottom if they are selling. So Today's webinar will try to make it very clear and give you guys clarity about uh, to get into the trends prior uh, the big moves. So you're going to participate in the big moves and you don't need to try and take the tops and bottom. Now, uh, another aspect of trend trading, which uh, many people, they unfortunately they fail with that, is uh, they see a trend on a one time frame, let's say on a daily time frame, they see an uptrend, but then they go to the one hour chart and they see uh, a retracement uh, of an uptrend, which on the one hour chart, obviously it's, it's a downtrend and they get confused. Today, we're going to give some clarity and uh, I hope that from today onwards you're going to implement what you're going to learn and that's going to give more clarity to your trading 
here at Admiral says, you know, we exist for more than 20 years. Uh, we have a license from uh, countries like Cyprus, like uh, UK, Estonia, the Australian Security Commissions. Uh, the spreads are really, really low. Uh, we have less than one PIB on Euro US dollar on the DAX one PIB. And you can access all of our products in terms of trading and investing through the MetaTrader platforms. Also, you can download them on your uh, mobile devices through Google, uh, Google Store and uh, Play Store for Android devices and uh, App Store from iOS. We run a promotion, guys, and really you can get advantage of that promotion. We have the spreads now uh, about 20% lower on uh, many uh, pairs and uh, assets. So if you are an intraday trader, just make sure you take good advantage of, of this. Just to make sure you follow us on Instagram because we post many stories, many reels, and uh, it's going to give you too much clarity in your trading. Maybe you're going to miss out some events and it's going to just pop up a notification on your Instagram. So use Admirals Global and press the follow button. Also, subscribe to the Telegram channel because on Telegram, we always... Uh, send out notifications prior live events and also when i go live every monday wednesday and friday morning for the morning briefing webinar so make sure you subscribe there and of course the youtube channel guys it's in very crucial if you haven't subscribed on the youtube channel and uh, activate the notification button please do it because all these uh, webinars I do, other educators do, we upload them. You're going to receive notifications, so you will always keep up with your uh, trading education. Okay, yes, for myself, I'm the same person, you see, with a costume on the, on the picture. I trade and investing for more than 10 years now. Uh, when it comes to trading, I usually do swing trading, rarely intraday trading now. And it's something I teach a lot and especially on the Forex market because it has so much volatility around news events. Swing trading, it's, uh, it's ideal most of the times. Now, as for today's agenda, what do we have for today as the title? Uh, said it very clear. We're going to talk about trend and only trend. It's very easy for many traders and I understand it. It was also easy for me right at the beginning of my trading journey to have the tendency to want to participate on a move after I see it take over. Okay, but that's not how the trading, the profitable trading is supposed to be because we want to participate when the price it's at the lower level if we're going to buy or when it's at the highest level if we want to sell okay now we have to understand our trading time frame if you are a trader which trades on the four hour chart we're going to talk about the two time frames you have to look at if you are a trader who trades on a five minute chart there is really no point to look at excuse me, the weekly chart or to look at the daily chart more than uh, just for direction. So if you're a five-minute trader, if you're a 15-minute trader, you have to have as a higher time frame your one-hour, your four-hour chart. If you are a daily or four-hour chart trader, you have to have as high time frame the weekly chart. Saying that, I repeat, there is no point to look at the weekly chart if you are a five-minute trader. Completely different concept. All right. So we have to understand this because that's a key element for successful trading implementation. And then we will talk about the major and minor trends. 
Again, that comes down to the time frame you're trading. You can see a major trend on the weekly chart, but also you can see a major trend on the one hour chart. If you are a five minute chart trader, you execute on the five minute and the 15 minute, then major trends for you are relevant on the hourly chart. And that's what you have to decide in which time frame you will execute trades. If you decide that and you say, okay, I will I decide from today that I'm going to execute on the four hour chart. So I don't need to look below the four hour chart. I don't need to look the hour charts. I don't need to look the 30 minute chart. I need to look the daily and the weekly chart. That's it. You do have clarity. That's what you uh, need as a trader, either if you just started or if you're trading for a while or for a year, for two years. Clarity for us, it's everything. Okay, saying that, keep this in mind about the major and minor trends and we're going to come back in a while. Now, I put a schematic here with uh, some... Let's bring the drawing tool. So what do we see on this semantic? We see a move starting from here and ending up there. Then we see another move starting from here, going back there. Then we see something happening here the price is changing direction. So price swing here and it's moving upwards. So far, we can identify two things. First thing, this move here to the upside and this move here to the upside, they are longer in duration and bigger in price move in distance compare both of them comparing to the move at point b can we everyone can everyone see that this leg here as we call it and this leg here they are bigger than the legs at every point b when we see that in an uptrend, it shows us that a trend is strong. What do we want to, to do when we see an uptrend? We want to buy and only buy because the pressure, it's on the upside. It's not on the downside. On the downside, there are some minor moves and they are less predictable. So I want to be a buyer when I see uptrend, okay? Then something else we can uh, identify. The second thing that this swing here, we call swing in the market. Every time the price changes direction. And if we draw these line charts instead of the candles, we can see the line bend it. So when we see a bent line, it means we have a swing in the market. It means price change direction. In this occasion here, the seller became a buyer. Now, we notice that this high point here is higher than this high point here. So here we have the first high and then the price made a higher high. Can everyone see that? What does it mean? It means that the buyers, maybe all these people who participate and everyone they were buying for their own reason, when the price start pushing higher at this point, 
these people and new people who haven't interacted with the market yet, they decided to buy more, either to buy more contracts, more shares. So when we buy an asset, a security or a currency or a share, always the price lifted higher. And the market creates what we call a higher high. So we have a successful higher high, then the price start moving backwards for a few reasons. The first reason is that some of the big buyers, we call them, some of the big boys, which they were buying from this low here all the way up there, they came to a realization that maybe the price here is too expensive. So maybe the market, it needs to retrace back. So they start selling their uh, holdings, their shares, their contract. When we sell something, the price has the tendency to lose its value, right? Also, at the same time, people who... Uh, who saw this, uh, who, were, who were viewing this as a peak point, they were thinking that maybe this is the end of this uptrend and then it's the beginning of a major downtrend. So they were start selling here. So in both occasions, we have people who were selling for their own reasons, regardless which one is the reason, but the price has only one um, result to lose its value. So the market, as I write you here, is retracing at every point B. So we have this retracement and at some point, either buyers who participated in this move buyers who participated in this move, new buyers, they decided that somewhere here, the price has a fair value and they want to buy it because they believe that this trend will continue to the upside. So we see a new impulse move as I mentioned it here. Every point A calls an impulse move and we call an impulse move as a move aligned with a predominant trend. And we see at this point right here, the market made a new higher high, which is higher than this high here. So we have successive higher highs and at every swing lower, we have successive higher lows, higher lows. You see, we have a low here and then the buyers, they stepped in and they bought from this low. So this low here, it's higher than this low here. And this low here is higher than this low here. So, the series of higher highs and higher lows consist an uptrend. So from here, you keep that every move aligned with the predominant trend calls an impulse move. Every move against the predominant trend, we call it as a retracement. And we prefer when we identify a higher high, like this one here, one, two, at point two, we identify the new high. We ideally want to wait for a price come a little bit back. We use some tools about that, some support resistant concept, which I explain in another webinar. You can go back and, and uh, listen to that and watch it. Or we can use Fibonacci retracement tool, which give us some uh, support resistance zones based on some Fibonacci sequence numbers. And then the 
the traders and investors decide that at this point here, they want to start their buying activities. So if they're going to start their buying activities, it means that they're going to lift the price higher. And there is higher probability when we see successive higher highs in the market, there's higher probability that the last swing high, which is this one here, it's going to be used as a support for possible new buys from the market participants. I repeat, at every successive higher high in the market, the last swing high most of the times is used to initiate buy positions from the market participants. And that's one of the basic aspects of, uh, of an uptrend. Let's move to the next slide. Guys, do you have any questions so far? Is it clear to everyone? Can you please type quickly if you uh, want to ask anything until now? I'm uh, really, I'm very happy to answer any questions you have because if you have, because here I want you to get clarity. And if you get this right, you will drastically increase your probabilities to experience more positive outcomes in the market. Okay, let's move to the next one. Let's see now the downtrend. How can we identify a downtrend? Of course, when we see series of lower lows, and lower highs. At this point here, we have some selling power in the market. However, if we have no idea about this information, let's say that this information, it's not, uh, hasn't unfolded yet in front of us. And the only thing we know is this move here. So knowing only this, it's not enough to say that we have a downtrend. We want to see successive lower low. We want to see a new low to be lower than the previous low. So when we see the retracement at this point here, we start seeing the sellers turn to buyers it means the market created a swing. Again, that's not enough reason by itself to start selling. We want to see the market retrace back to at a level where the sellers, they will believe that it's a fair value for the price and they will start selling again. And we want to see this low point here broke and a creation of a new lower low point in this market. Clear so far? Then when we identify this lower low, we will say to ourselves, now we are ready to start looking for short plays. Why? Because we have a successive lower low we see one impulse, second impulse move. So as I taught you on last webinars and uh, as I'm telling you every time I do the morning briefing webinars, uh, the last swings in the market, the recent swings, they will be held for possible uh, sales in a downtrend. So this low point was acting as a support for this move. After it broken, it will act as resistant. So we want to keep an eye at this area here because many traders are watching it. So we want to see a catalyst to go to 
the short side to sell this market. We don't want to buy in this market here because it has low probability of success. Why? For the reason that nobody guarantees that the price will come all the way and test this broken low point. Most of the times, often the market is doing that, the market behaves that way. But when a trend is so strong, it's super strong, the retracements are very shallow. They don't even come to reach these levels here. So if you start buying here, expecting the market to go all the way here because you know it's an area of interest, maybe the market will never come to reach this area and will just shoot to the downside, leave you with a losing trade. That's why we don't want to be buyers when we have a downtrend. We want to be sellers and only sellers. Patient is key. And sometimes staying out of, of a trade is better instead of being in a trade and try to make your way out of the trade and go through frustration and through uh, regrets. So let's keep moving. The price now is pushing to the upside. It comes to a fair value point. And we see that sellers, they are coming in with force and trying to sell the market and push it lower. So after this low point break, we have a new lower low in the market. And we see that this impulse move is big enough. It's bigger than this retracement. If it's bigger also than this uh, previous impulse move, we know that this trend is healthy and it has most, most likely, it has more to, to give. So we're gonna wait for the buyer stepped in and buy, lift the price a bit higher somewhere around the last previous swing. And we would like to ideally sell around this level here. Okay. Now, as in an uptrend, same applies in a downtrend. A move in line with uh, the, the, the major trend, it's called impulse move. Every point A calls an impulse move. And every move against the predominant trend calls retracement. So you always will hear me saying impulse move retracement. So from now on, we all know what uh, impulse move means, what retracement means. Okay. Any questions, guys? Any questions, something you would like to maybe comment as well? Feel free to type uh, on the chat. Let's move to the next one. Now, I took an example of a recent price behavior from the market Australian dollar, US dollar. This chart uh, happened on the 4th of April until uh, this move happened on the 4th of April until the 17th of May, okay? Just try to be with me. Don't try to, con don't, don't rush to confuse yourself with these waves here, okay? And it's gonna be really clear. And I'm sure right at this moment, we're gonna have many aha uh -huh, uh, times from those you're gonna watch it either later on the recording or from those you are here and you are watching it live. So I start always from the weekly chart because I enter either on the daily or on the four hour chart. So my focus about market structure is the weekly chart. 
on the weekly chart, on this pair, at this point here, uh, let's make it uh, maybe green color. So at this point here, we saw some price action, what we call pin bar. And we said that maybe the market wants to push to the downside. Now, the reason I show you guys the line charts is simply because it is much easier to understand the basic concept of trends with the line charts instead of the uh, candlesticks or bar charts, okay? Because we have so many weeks, we have some spikes, some dodgy bars. It's uh, become sometimes really messy around the swings to, to work with the candlesticks and the bar chart. So uh, it's much easier if you press the line chart uh, button on your data trader platform and you can identify easily the swings. Okay, let's move on. We have the weekly chart. We identified that it's moving to the downside. Now, at some point, this move will come to an end. It's not going to go forever. So I spot some support areas when I looked at the left of the chart. So previously, when the Australian US dollar arrived at this area here, we saw buyer stepped in and the same happened here we saw buyers stepped in so we call this area of support so i estimated that most likely the market will come to retest all these levels here what i do next after i understand what's happening on the weekly chart i flip to the daily chart and on the daily chart I want to see the line bended. I want to see swings in the market so I can take trades. And at which direction do you think we want to trade on the daily chart and on the four hour chart? Based on what you see here on the weekly chart, what we just say that we see that the market is trying to push to the downside. Can you please type which direction would you prefer to trade on the daily or on the four hour chart? Do you want to be a seller or do you want to be a buyer? What do you, what do you think? Seller, seller. Everyone so far say seller. Is it someone who wants to be a buyer? No? Okay, that's good. So we go down to the daily chart. And what do we see here? We see that here we have to pay attention. We see that the, the line here bent it and it gave us a swing. Do you guys see this swing here? That's everybody can see that the market make a swing here. Then we have this move to the downside. And as we explained earlier, we had this low and now we have a lower low in the market. I hope that everyone can see that because this is important. So after a while, we see buyers, they step in and they push the price higher. If the price come around this level to this level here, we can start selling. Here, it's your first trade. You can sell. Then the market make that was a lower low. Then the market made a new lower low here. Do you see this? We have this swing in the market. If I draw straight line, and I will draw it for you. We draw a straight line here. So the market at this point in time start selling off. So we could also participate here. So one opportunity, second opportunity. The market, it's keep moving lower. At some point stops, 
it push back if we were here if we were around this area which it was the last swing we could definitely participate again as a seller uh, then the market comes down all the way to this uh, support area and that's where we stop initiating new sell positions do you guys understand this when the market push higher here and make this swing i don't want to sell this market and that's where many many traders unfortunately from my experience they start trading they don't trade here because they think maybe this is an illusion and this lower low it's fake and the price is going to push back because they see all this all this move to the upside from the buyers so they think that this uh this is wrong something is wrong here and the buyers they're gonna keep buying then the price make a lower low and they hesitate to sell around this area because uh, now they think ah maybe this market uh it it it, it ends here so uh, i'm confused i don't know what to do then they see this move here unfortunately many traders they start initiating positions here because they don't want to miss the move because they didn't enter here they didn't enter here they didn't enter there and they say oh my god i missed the move i want to sell here and they find 100 reasons why they have to sell at this time and why it's the right time to sell which the market then it start retracing upwards it takes them out of the trades it continues down it gives the last move around strong support areas there are many many buying limit orders waiting to get filled and push the price to the upside so that's where unfortunately many traders they're trying to sell against okay now if we go to the four hour chart though let's say we don't want to take on the daily chart because we don't see a price action that we want to see and we want to take four hour chart trades because we can use tight stops so let's say uh 20 30 40 pips stop so we can make uh, two to one, three to one, one to one, whatever, 10 to one, whatever it's your uh, reward ratio. So let's, let's explain this four hour move and then we will see how can we get, can we participate in this market? So this move starts from here, repeat from the weekly chart also, the four hour chart it's this it shows this peak here then on the four hour chart i, I couldn't uh include the prior move guys here on the four hour chart because it was uh too big for to squeeze it in into this slide so we see only the move from represented in the cycle of the daily and the weekly chart only it's the same move here but with more swings and that's where we're going to identify the major and minor swings in the market on the four hour chart where it's our execution time frame we don't look for major minor for major swings on the four hour chart we simply execute the major swings of the daily chart or the weekly chart so you see how many swings the four hour chart make here until it go all the way down all these swings here guys one band two band three four five all these six swings here is simply this move of the daily chart this trade move from the daily chart 
it comes with these swings here on the on the four hour chart so uh, uh this one here this one yeah that's exactly which one it is so we don't want to start selling every single swing on the four hour chart on the four hour chart these are minor trends and how do we separate them and understand them in advance because you're going to tell me now okay Theo now this move happened it came to an end and now we are analyzing the past I agree with you totally agree with you uh, our goal is to identify this move prior place off so what we want is to have the daily and the weekliest reference and not do analysis on the four hour chart the reason many traders they get stopped out in so many trades either they take they pick the direction right but they enter at a wrong time they don't they cannot timing their trades and that's where they get stopped out and then they see the market just move on uh, on their direction and they say oh my god i was right why i took it there i should enter uh, a little bit higher price and so on. how can we avoid this we have to understand that once the market made a lower low on the daily chart then and only then we're going to go to the four hour chart to take trades so this move here there are swings on the four hour chart but the daily chart wasn't even in a downtrend did you guys understand this i will repeat again we are on the daily chart and we see this move all the way down here making a lower low but on the four hour chart all this move here insists by consists by all these swings minor swings that's what we call minor trends it's this one here this trend here so we have to be patient we identify that most likely we have a new downtrend on the daily chart we see that from the weekly chart the big picture is that we have so much room to move and we want to find entries either on the daily or on the four hour chart it's not something black and white we just need to have a methodology which give us high probability trades that's all we need to have so back to the analysis after this lower low on the four hour chart it was this move here then on the four hour chart the market make a push to the upside it's this move here on the daily chart. It's the same move. Then all this move on the daily chart shows with this move on the four hour chart. Do you guys see that here we have just a straight line pushing lower, but here we have a swing in the market. On the four hour chart, we have a swing. So once we identify that the daily is down and it's aligned with the weekly chart, then we can use these swings here on the four hour chart to start selling that's the ideal time frame correlation uh trading that's how i trade all the time and i'm telling you from experience this is one of the the highest probability uh trading methodology okay we're going to talk about trading patterns and um, how to enter the market and candlesticks and uh, all this stuff later. But if we take uh, this for now and we understand how to read the trends with swings, higher highs, higher lows on an uptrend, lower highs, lower lows on a downtrend, then we're going to increase our understanding about the market a lot so once we realize and we confirm not realize once we confirm a second lower low swing in the daily chart 
on the four hour chart, we have to start looking for sales. So uh, if the price is gonna move somewhere around the last swings on the four hour chart, we want to definitely sell this market. Absolutely. Because weekly is down, daily is down with lower highs and lower lows. So on the four hour chart, we just to need to find some strong price action setups like the engulfing and the pin bars and just sell it. And you can keep it, uh, you can keep your trade until open until the next zone of support. So if you were entering somewhere here, you had a stop loss there. So let's say this was maybe 30 pips and you had a move to 200 pips it's a good risk reward. You risk one and you make 6.8, 6.9, how much it is, almost seven times. So uh, that's what we call high probability trading. Let's move on. This impulse move here on the daily chart, on the four hour chart consisted by these swings in the market, which you can trade them. These are minor swings. Do you guys understand the difference now of uh, major and minor trends or um, major and minor swings? These trends here, they are downtrends, but there are minor downtrends comparing to uh, the, the major daily trend here. So if we're going to initiate sell positions anywhere uh, around minor trends, then we have to be very fast in and out. We usually don't tend to keep these trades open for uh, um, reward to risk 10 to 1, okay, or for reward to risk 5 to 1. We have to take one to one maximum, one and a half to one, and we just get out of the trade. Because at some point, these minor swings here, which we can see them, they gonna be retraced back because the daily it's gonna retrace back. Yeah. And when the daily it's gonna retrace back, it's gonna take all the stops out of this market. Okay, so we use the weekly chart to identify the market direction, to draw some support, some resistance. Then we go to the daily chart. We rearrange our support, readjust our support and resistance. And then we try to see where the market breaks its structure from an uptrend to a downtrend. How do we identify it? We explain lower highs and lower lows. Then and only then we can go to the four hour chart and start taking some trades with the predominant direction. Now, let's go to the opposite side. Let's say you don't watch the daily chart, you don't watch the weekly chart, and many traders, they go directly to the four hour chart and they see this move here where the market make a lower low, and then this low was unable to move lower than this low. So we have a new higher high, and they say, oh, I have a higher high in the market, so I see an uptrend. Yes, you are right. You do see an uptrend. And then what happens? They buy here, they have their stop there. So they enter here, they have their stop there. The market moves a little bit, they are happy. And then after a while, immediately takes their stop. And then they start wondering what happened, why they lost, and uh, many other questions which they just track down their uh, psychology. But if we understand that this uptrend, which it's an uptrend because it consists with higher highs and higher lows, it's an uptrend within within a major downtrend the daily it shows the major trends the weekly also shows major trends so 
the, the daily has a major downtrend, but most of the traders, beginner traders, they get caught into this uptrend move. They see higher highs, higher lows. They want to buy it, but they don't go to the daily chart because they didn't told to go to the daily chart or to the weekly chart and to read the market structure. Because uh, if you want to, if you are anxious to get into the move and you want to participate right now, then you think that I have to go to the four hour chart or to the one hour chart, make my analysis, find an entry point, and then I get into the market. But the reason guys, we watch the daily and the weekly chart, it's because the big players, we call them the big boys, they open trades and they keep them for weeks, for months, for years sometimes. They don't open a trade and they want to get a small move out of the market and close the trade. There are funds, they invest uh, millions and billions of dollars and euros to trade and to bet into the market direction. So they don't open a trade here and they say, okay, it moves a little bit. I close it just, I take my profit and, and that's it. Uh, that's why trends on the higher time frame they tend to last for a while and we can use the lower time frame not for analysis. We can use the lower time frames only to execute in the direction of the higher time frame. By all means, you can participate in any uptrend within a major downtrend, but you have to acknowledge the fact that it's a low probability setup. You have to acknowledge the fact that it will be wiser to trade smaller size if you risk 1% or 2% on every trade with a trend. If you're going to take the counter trend trades, just make sure you risk less than that. Okay. Uh, as an example, my full trading size, it's always 2%. I don't take counter turn trades. I'm very patient, but at the beginning uh, of my career, I remember when I used to take this type of trade, I try always to reduce my size to let's say half percent or one um, percent, whatever. Okay. Now, another example here, we see this move to the upside, which is the retracement of the daily. And on the four hour chart, we see this new uptrend. We have a higher high here. We have a higher low here. So it's an uptrend. Then some people, they want to start buying here. They buy right here because they think, ah, the market moves so much. Do you see this strong impulse move here? Maybe it was a big bullish candle. The market moves so, so fast came from this price to this price. So it can continue from here, break all the resistance, never look back and just keep pushing to the upside. In the markets, this never happens, okay? Or if this happens, it has an end. At some point, it's gonna retrace back, it's gonna keep the predominant direction and so on. We explained the reason why earlier. And then we come down to this point here, which is the support. And on the four hour chart, we can see this uh, higher low and then it was a higher high and market was keep moving to the upside. Okay, but we always have to acknowledge what is happening on the daily chart. On the weekly chart, we can see some very strong indications often about market direction before it's gonna play off. Uh, some at, at resistance points, if we see some pin bars, like it was this occasion here, if you go to this pair, you can clearly see it. Uh, or um, which one was the Euro? I think it was the Euro US dollar with a bearish engulfing, I'm not sure, but 
it were some very strong indication on the weekly chart that the trend is about to change. So what do we do? We patiently go down to the daily chart and we look for this break of structure, the new lower, lower, lower high if we are sellers. If we are buyers, we will look for higher highs and higher lows. Now, rules for a high probability trading strategy. It's what I'm saying all the time now. Uh, if you want, guys, take a screenshot, write it down. And this is key element for trading uh, success, trading profitability. Uh, of course, some losses, they cannot care. So we go on the weekly chart. We draw our horizontal areas of support and resistance. It is easier to use the line charts to identify the swings in case the candlesticks uh, become very messy and we cannot identify the, the swings in the market. And it happens often. So just uh, click the line chart and you want to solve this problem. Then after we identify a structure and we understand what's going on on the weekly chart in terms of support resistance and in terms of if we have a downtrend or an uptrend, uh, then we go to the daily chart and we identify the areas of retracement as I showed you. Then we go on the four hour chart and we execute. We can execute on the daily chart, be flexible, uh, or you can exceed on the four hour chart, wherever you're going to see your price action. But try to have everything in a line. Then our target is at least one to one, ideally two to one or more. Okay. Why do we want that? Because we are trading probabilities. And if we, want, we win more times than we lose, we can afford to be uh, wrong more times and be ahead of the game. It means with positive equity care. We have uh, three minutes left. Can you please, I see uh, Raquel uh, posted a question right at the beginning. I will answer your question right now. Can you guys please uh, type any question you may have? We have a couple of minutes left. So I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, in the meantime, I'll take you if you don't have any questions, I would like to really take you back to uh, for a very, very fast recap here. Do we read, how do we read the uptrends? We see the impulse moves. Point A is the impulse. We want to see retracements and then we start buying. We don't want to start buying right at the top because we don't know if the trend is going to keep going. We want to buy at as low as possible and take profits around the tops. And if the opportunity arises again, we can repeat the same scenario. So uptrend, impulse, and retracements, we have a high, a new higher high, a new higher high. We have a low, a new higher low, a new higher low. Same with downtrend, but opposably, we have the impulse move to the downside, the retracements to the upside. So this can be an uptrend. And the A's are downtrends. And we want to be sellers at every retracement. And then we have our minor and major trends. Minor trends, it's those small swings on the four-hour chart and major are on the daily chart. Now, if you are trading very quickly, if you are trading on the 15-minute chart, then all the swings you see on the for our chart are major swings. That's what I told you. You need to find which one is your uh, execution time frame, and then and only then you will identify your analysis time frame. I have a webinar recording on YouTube about time frame correlation. If you missed it, uh, please go and watch it. It matched perfectly with this uh, webinar today. So Rachel asked, haven't been trading this week, trying to learn about volume profile and order flow. Are you able to do a webinar about this aspect? Definitely. I used to trade a lot, a lot volume profile and order flow when I used to be an intraday trader. 
And uh, soon I see Rahel, you are participating on the morning briefings, if I remember correct. So give me some time and I will put some concept about that uh, soon. I cannot promise exactly which uh, webinar it's going to be, but I will try to make something. Uh, guys, please, at the end, it's going to be a survey. Please make sure if you want to, to leave any comment, uh, any observation you may have, it will help me a lot to improve something you want to see or if you want to see something new, please let us know. Uh, make sure you uh, subscribe on the next webinars and also if you have the time to come live on Wednesdays, on uh, Fridays and Mondays at 9.30 a.m. Eastern European time for 30 minutes, we do the market analysis and we take trades if there are trading there. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate your participation. I wish you to have a lovely evening and I will talk to you soon.